Just by means of an introduction, uh, my name is Nick Havas and I'm responsible for the film and photography at Emperor. Um, just my kind of story, I fell in love with taking pictures when I was about 10 years old when my father bought me one of those classic 1970s um, Kodak Instamatic cameras where you pop the cassette in, uh, took about 12 photographs and then sent it away and it came back about three weeks later with some pretty ropey uh, results. Um, at art school I studied graphic design and photography and uh, then I worked for about 22 years as a graphic designer after that. And then uh, a series of circumstances several years ago allowed me to follow my real passion, which was photography. And uh, I started working in film and photography. And I have been emperor for this month will be my third, so coming up to my birthday. Um, over the last few years, we've seen a bit of a revolution um, in quality. We moved from high definition into ultra high definition. So cameras recording in 4K, our television sets able to broadcast in 4K, um, high level uh, production cameras now, professional cameras are recording in 5K, in 6K, and even in 8K, which is enabling us to see and record a quite incredible amount of detail. So then uh, a few weeks ago, um, or a couple of months ago, along comes the virus. And that leads us into a, a whole new revolution of uh, what we would term unprofessional uh, level of quality. So it's, it's almost like it's taken us back in terms of television to the blurry 1960s or the 1970s with um, you know, soft images, muddy sound, blurry visuals. Um, and there's a new kind of, uh, there's a rawness to, to what's being produced and what's, what we're becoming very, very accustomed to now. And there's a big question, I suppose, does it really matter? Does it matter that, that the quality has dropped so far? And I think personally, broadly speaking, I don't think it matters at all. I think the, it doesn't matter because um, this is a situation that we're all in together. So no one is trying to get the upper hand. It's, it's taken us into a whole new uh, area of communication of this homemade self-shot, whatever you want to call it, type video. Um, even television, I, I'm a big fan of the news quiz, How I Got News For You. And the first one they broadcast of the new series, which was a few weeks ago, and everyone was obviously situated at home with their webcams or their laptops or whatever. And the quality was really terrible and the sound quality was really terrible, but actually I really loved it. And I thought there was a, a real kind of an honesty and an authenticity to it. I've noticed uh, in the last couple of weeks, BBC have now delivered cameras to their homes. They've delivered microphones and they've got proper um, TV lighting. And so, the quality, although they're still broadcasting from home, has kind of gone back up again, which um, personally I kind of sort of feel like I'm, I'm missing something again. I'm, I'm missing that lo-fi quality. So does it really matter? Well, I think, as I say, broadly speaking, I don't think it does because we're all in this together. We're all accustomed to this low quality. But I think this uh, session is more for if there's a need to produce something of slightly better quality, of slightly higher production value. Not TV quality, not film crew quality, but something that, that comfortably sits in between, then this is what I'm gonna give you some pointers towards. And that could be, you need to produce something slightly better quality for investors or stakeholders, employees or whatever, maybe you've got thousands of employees all around the world, time zones don't suit a Zoom, conference call so you may want to just produce something that has a little bit longer life. So does it really matter even if we go straight to the very top? 
Uh, this gentleman here makes his little videos, shoots them on his phone like a selfie and posts them on social media. And it's absolutely fine. It's perfectly acceptable. So I don't think in this sense it really matters that much. Um, I'm going to talk about three different things that will uh, give you more of a successful video uh, production um, final result. And three things. First will be composition, the composition and framing of our images. Second will be how we light ourselves, because let's face it, these are selfie style videos. And the third thing will be the quality of the audio and how can we improve that. <coughs> Excuse me. So composition and framing, where to position the camera, where to point the camera, what should we include in the frame? What we all tend to do is we get our device, our laptop, we put it on a table, we put it on the kitchen table, on a desk, in our home office, whatever it is, and we look down into the lens of the camera. And what that gives us back is this really rather strange, distorted uh, perspective of our ceilings and uh, a deeply unflattering camera angle um, for ourselves. Super easy to fix this one. If you raise the camera up, grab a box, put it on a box, raise the level of the camera up so it's roughly eye level as a guide, the quality of that shot will vastly improve. Um, a friend of mine in America, he, uh, he has to host a lot of Zoom calls and rather cleverly he took the ironing board, put it on his desk and he can he can set the level he needs he's a really big guy so he needs to set it quite high anyway we've all got an ironing board at home i assume um if uh, if it's okay if it's not in use and let's face it we're all living at home and locked in how many of us are ironing our clothes probably not many use the ironing board it's perfect So you can see immediately we can go from a rather poor camera angle, unflattering, to one where the eyes are roughly speaking on the level of the camera. It's a massive improvement and it's super easy to do. Let's think about what the viewer can see. Now in our laptops, in our phones, whatever, they have wide angle lenses approximately equivalent to about 28 millimeter in a full frame camera. That means it's going to show an awful lot of what's around us. So our viewers are very curious and they will be very interested to look at our furniture, look at our furnishings, look at our dogs and cats in the frame. Do we want to show them all of that? That's for you to decide, but I think if you want to produce something which is a slightly higher level, then we should look for uh, more neutral backgrounds, less visually distracting. Do we want them to be staring at our family photographs and pictures? Do we want them to be looking at our kitchen and thinking, possibly time for a makeover? I think probably not. And again, I think if we want to up the level slightly, we can make some simple improvements. So. Think about the position of the camera, get it up to eye level if possible. Think about what's behind us, declutter, take pictures off the wall, and uh, think about the, the main thing of exactly everything that that wide angle camera is taking in. Number two, section two, let's think about the lighting. <clears throat> Now, obviously, you haven't all got um, video or film or television lights in the house, I assume. So what can we do to make some very simple improvements to lighting our, our video? First of all, don't shoot against bright windows. Heavily backlit scenes. The cameras in our devices can't handle that extreme contrast and dynamic range shift. Um, we are blessed with absolutely fantastic weather at the moment. 
so the outside is very, very bright, but you should try and avoid having that as a background if, if at all possible. Really simple way to find where the light is falling on the face, and we want to get a nice, even, flat, if possible, illumination of the face and get some light into the eyes. Take your smartphone, flip the camera, put it into selfie mode, look at yourself, and just swivel it around so that as you can do it, you can see where the light is falling until you find the optimum position. This is uh, probably one of the most overlooked um, elements in producing video at home. Audio, it's actually one of the most important. Even if you can't significantly improve the framing and the composition, even if you can't get great light, if your sound is good, then your message will come across. If your sound is bad, if it's cutting out because of whatever bad internet connection, if it's muffled, if it's um, inaudible at times, it makes very difficult viewing uh, for your audience. So let's, let's think about how we can improve the audio. Um, the microphones in our devices are tiny and they're hidden away. It's obvious where they are on the phone, it's around the mouthpiece. I had no idea where they were in a laptop, so I Googled it and they're found somewhere inside or, or adjacent to where the um, loudspeakers are. They're pretty poor quality and they are, the thing to consider is the microphone would be positioned a long way from the source and the source of the audio in this case is our mouths. Now, what that means is the, the microphone will pick up any ambient sound that is closer to it than the source. So that's gonna be your dog barking, your, the echo or the reverb on your voice, the coffee machine, the bin man outside, whatever it is, whatever's louder than your mouth and considering the distance to the microphone, it's gonna pick it up with really annoying clarity. So I would strongly recommend if you want to up the quality of a video, is um, buying a Lavalier or a lapel microphone that plugs directly into the device. Um, I've researched a couple here. They cost around 40, 45 quid, and they will give you crystal clear professional sounding audio. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's the Shure MLV MVLA or the Rode Smart Lab. This one in particular is, is very well thought of. They come with a little windshield and all you need to do is clip them on, plug them directly into your device, into the headphone jack. Where do we put them? It's always a bit of a question. Roughly a microphone should be positioned approximately eight inches from the mouth. Just clip it onto your clothing. And that's roughly the span of your hand. Um, some people, when they speak, they let out quite a, an exaggerated puff of air, which can pick up as a pop on the microphone. If you buy one of these and you test it out and you see that that's happening, all you need to do is clip the microphone upside down. It'll still pick up the audio, no problem at all. But it'll get rid of that puff. And, if you look on TV tonight and you see interviews and news readers and stuff, you'll see quite often that the microphone is positioned upside down. And that's because they have quite an exaggerated puff of air when they speak. So those are the three things that will make dramatic improvements to video shots at home. So, Let's have a look at what equipment uh, do I need or, or what would really help um, up the ante. Most of us now in the home will have some sort of actual camera. Um, even uh, consumer level cameras, really inexper inexperienced, inexpensive ones will shoot very good quality video. 
often 4K quality audio, video, sorry. But uh, if you have one of these and you want to use it, you should think about support for it. There's nothing worse than wobbly video. So you need to consider a tripod, cheap tripod. Even a desktop tripod will be absolutely fine to give you stability of image. I would highly recommend, if you are going to shoot on a camera, set your white balance. Don't leave it on auto. White balance is the colour temperature of the film. If you move around when you talk, which we all do, if it's set to auto, your colour will be shifting all the time. The sensors in these cameras are very, very sensitive. So set your white balance. If you're being lit by daylight, set it to daylight or um, 5,600 Kelvin. If you're using, if you're say shooting in the evening and you're using tungsten light, set it to tungsten or 3,600 Kelvin and your white balance will be pretty good. Set the aperture in the lens as wide as you can around f2.8 or 3.6 and that will give you a, a nice aesthetic separation between the face and the background. It will throw the background slightly out of focus. Set the focus whether you're using autofocus or manual focus you need to focus on the eyes. If you're not going to shoot on a camera these things now are absolutely incredible. The quality of video that our phones can produce is astonishing. If you've bought a recent model, Samsung, an Apple, uh, a Sony in the last six months or so, they probably even have three, a choice of three lenses on back, a wide angle, a standard, and a telephoto. I would recommend using the standard. The wide angle will be very wide, so you may get some distortion, and of course you see too much of the surroundings. Same thing goes though, if you're going to shoot on the phone, you need to think about some stabilisation. You can buy uh, some relatively cheap um, phone holders with a little tripod that can sit on a table or a desk or a shelf or whatever, just to stabilise the camera. Um, I made a, a short film um, with most of the, the content that we're talking about here uh, the other week and a client of ours, um, Vitek, who own lots of uh, companies that make uh, professional studio lighting, tripods, uh, cameras, etc. Saw the video and sent me one of these, which is made by a company they own called Joby. It's basically what all the YouTubers are using. So it's a clever little phone holder. It's got a microphone, it's got a light, and the base is a tripod. Now I've been testing this out and it's actually rather brilliant. So you can set it on a desk, set it on a shelf, you slot your phone into the phone holder. The light has a little light, which will just give you a little bit of fill light on the face, which is really great. It's got a little diffuser cover on there to soften the light. And you can even dim it. So people like me who wear glasses, you can quite often get a little bit of a reflection with a dimmer. You can lessen that. But one of the best things, it's got um, a directional condenser microphone on the top. And this is what we call a short shotgun microphone. It's been specially designed to point at the source, i.e. you, and um, block out a lot of the noise or the, the ambient noise in the room so that the audio is really very good. All you do, plug it in, it comes with all different um, cables for different types of phones, plug straight into the, um, this is an iPhone, so it goes straight into the lightning conduct connector and you have really nice sounding, clean, crisp audio. So you want to film all your clips, you don't want the pressure and the pain of having to do it all in one take. So when you're happy that you've got all the footage, all the clips, without the bloopers, without you swearing, you're going to need to edit this together into something more coherent. Um, there are plenty of free 
vid video editing apps available now. I've done a little bit of research. Here are two uh, highly recommended ones for Windows platform. I've not used them, I don't work on Windows, but the recommendations are very high. One is called Filmora, one is called OpenShot. As I say, they are free to download and then you can edit your clips together. If you use uh, a Mac, all devices, um, iPads, laptops, desktops, all ship with this free um, video software called iMovie, which I know is excellent. Uh, my children play with it and uh, it's a very powerful tool. Or alternatively, uh, if you go down the route of shooting your footage on a camera or a phone, you can send us the footage. Um, we will put it to graphic and animate them and then send you back for review something um, a little bit more professional, perhaps, um, for, for distributing on your channels. So um, I will pause there, and if anyone has any questions. No hands going up. It's absolutely fine. Um, so it's, uh, that's it from me. I did, as I said, I alluded to, I made a little video uh, a week or so ago. Um, we will send around the link so that you can, uh, you can view that if you wish. Thank you very much for joining today. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. And um, stay safe, uh, stay indoors. And remember, if you do point a camera at yourselves, don't forget to smile. <laughs> Thanks very much, Nick.